Hey everybody, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages with a new Words of the Week. This week we're going to talk about hiatus. First, as always, let's practice pronouncing this word. Hiatus. 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 What part of speech is it? It's a noun. That us at the end is a good indication that it's both a noun and of Latin origin. Hiatus, or uh, hiatus, spelled the same, has retained its original meaning surprisingly well, an opening, gap, or rupture. Although for many centuries, it had more of a medical uh, feel to it than anything. It can still be used that way today, but you're much more likely to find it with this more general meaning a break or interruption, especially in an otherwise continuous series of actions. Especially when you're talking about taking a break in your work. A hiatus is kind of like an extended vacation, but usually a vacation with purpose. So you're taking a break from your regular job, but you're using that time to recover, like from an injury or stress, or to achieve another specific goal. For example, let's look at this sentence here. She went on hiatus from her job to fulfill a lifelong dream, traveling the world. Okay, so in this case, it is a vacation. She's going to have fun. Uh, I'm je very jealous, uh, but it is used as a hiatus because there's a purpose involved. Let's look at this next one. This one's maybe a little bit more traditional. After participating in the Olympics, the athlete took a well-deserved hiatus, disappearing from public events for a few months. Okay, so this one, it's less about fun and more about recovering or just, you know, getting out of the spotlight and de-stressing. Uh, pay attention to the verbs and the prepositions that uh, we use with this. So she went, on hiatus so you go on hiatus over here you take a hiatus so you can use it a couple different ways but those are the most common ones go on hiatus you can be on hiatus or you can take a hiatus i've got one more example for you apex languages is relocating that means no new videos for a while until the teacher comes back from hiatus that's right, folks. The reason I chose to teach you this word today is that I will be going on hiatus myself. I will not be creating any new videos for a while because I need that time to A, pack, B, unpack, and C, settle into life in a new city. Just figure things out. I'm still available through phone, text, and email to answer any questions you may have. Apex Languages has not shut down, just the video portion for a while. Not to worry though, did you know that there are more than 60 videos uploaded on my website and YouTube channel right now? That should hopefully be enough to keep you busy through the summer. Dry your tears, good friends. I still have more words to teach you. I wanted to share some more terms related to taking time off of work starting with a couple of synonyms. First is sabbatical. Repeat that with me. Sabbatical, sabbatical, sabbatical. A noun as well. Sabbatical is actually Hebrew, the language of the Jews. It means related to or suitable for the Sabbath or Shabbat. A day, usually Friday evening through Saturday night, set aside for rest and worship. You're not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath. And similarly, you're probably not doing much during a work sabbatical either. Sabbaticals, like hiatuses, are often used to describe extended periods of rest away from work after an injury, but can also refer to time off scheduled for training or study purposes, etc. Let's read my sample sentence. After his panic attack, Doctors recommended that the businessman take a long sabbatical to get some much needed R&R. What does R&R stand for? It's actually 
a military abbreviation with a couple potential variations. It can mean rest and recuperation, rest and recreation, or rest and relaxation. Uh, it was originally coined during the Korean War back in the 1950s to describe soldier downtime. Nowadays, uh, I would say rest and relaxation is the most common translation, uh, although uh, recuperation was the original. Either way, you get the idea. R&R stands for a good time. Another synonym I have for you is leave. Of course, you know this as a verb already. In fact, I already featured it briefly in my video about turning over new leaves. But let's practice the pronunciation again anyhow. Okay, leave, 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 right? Not leaf, it's leave. Um, as a verb, it means to exit or go somewhere else. As a noun, uh, leave, or the long version, a leave of absence, describes a work vacation that is, once again, more work than play. Let's read the following sentence. Tina wished she could go on extended maternity leave, but her company wouldn't pay for more than three weeks. You see, Tina doesn't want a break from work so she can go snorkeling in Hawaii. She needs the time because she needs to take care of a new baby. There are many different types of work leave, most covered by the Family and Medical Leave Act here in the United States. So we've seen maternity leave, paternity leave, right? Maternity is for mothers, paternity for fathers, uh, and that's after the birth of a new baby. There's just general sick leave or health leave, that's the same thing. Caretaker leave is if you need to take time off to care for, for example, an, old, uh, an aging mother or father, right? If someone's sick in your family, or you know, even a, a husband or a kid, if they're really sick and you need to take time off of work, that's caretaker leave. Bereavement, let's say that one, bereavement, bereavement. That means uh, mourning, sadness, very deep sadness. And so bereavement leave is when you need to take time off after the death of a loved one or a friend. Okay, so you go to the funeral and, and you know, it covers a funeral, things like that, but also other time that you might need after someone's death. So that is bereavement leave. Uh, military leave uh, is for people who need to take off from their work uh, if you're in the National Guard, for example. So you have a job, but you need to take it off uh, to go do your job as a soldier. And then personal leave, right? That's the one we normally do, okay, for any other reason. This is not a complete list. There are lots of other types, uh, and you can find those in employment handbooks, for example. Uh, but it's a good group of different types of leaves. Now for something a little different. Furlough is a word you've probably seen or heard in recent months. Repeat it with me. Furlough, furlough, furlough. It can be both a noun and a verb and is of Dutch origins. Voorlof was a term used to describe time requested off for soldiers, their own version of R&R. &R. Here in the United States, anyone can be furloughed, although it is still more common in the military and it's not something you request. A furlough is a forced, temporary leave of absence, usually required when a company cannot afford to pay its employees wages, like what happened with the COVID pandemic struck. Let's read. During the economic shutdown, many workers were furloughed and forced to find alternative means of making money. After months on furlough, they were beginning to wonder if they'd ever be able to go back to work again. Uh, let me just point out here that in the first sentence, furloughed is a verb, a passive verb, and in the second one, it's a noun. And as a noun, it's followed by on, okay? After months on furlough. Uh, so it's used uh, similarly to a hiatus and the other ones, you know, go on furlough, you're, you are on furlough, etc. Finally, the last word I want to discuss today is layoff. 
pronounced for what it is, a combination of the words lay and off. Repeat it with me. Lay off. Lay off. Lay off. Note that this term can also be both a noun and a verb, but as a verb, it is spelled as two separate words. Furloughs are bad, but layoffs are worse. What is the difference? Well, furloughs are meant to be strictly temporary situations. As a guarantee of this, most of the time employees are still allowed to keep their benefits, like health insurance, even if they're not working and receiving salaries. Layoffs are less clear cut. The term originated in the late 1800s, referring to temporary release for seasonal workers. Because rich people always assume that the poor are lazy, they assumed that the seasonal workers would spend their time off just laying around the house all day. To them, layoff had a positive connotation. 70 years later in the 1960s, a lot of factories started going out of business, and this term became euphemistic go-to, a nice way to describe a bad situation. Hundreds of thousands of workers lost their jobs. The thing about layoff is that your employer will claim it is only a temporary situation, like a furlough, and sometimes workers can even retain certain benefits for a limited amount of time. But most of the time, your job is gone for good. So technically it's defined as a forced leave of absence where the employee is not to blame. They're good employees. The employer just can't pay its bills so it needs to reduce costs by thinning the staff. This leave can be temporary, but usually it is permanent, in which case being laid off is little different than getting dismissed, fired, sacked, or canned. Let's take a look at our sample sentences. Once again, I've used layoff as both parts of speech, first as a verb and secondly as a noun. When the two companies merged, many employees were laid off because their jobs had suddenly become redundant. Mad about these layoffs, the workers had been let go protested. Thought you were getting out of homework just because I'm taking a hiatus? Think again. Write me a story about a time that you or a friend went on hiatus or were furloughed. It doesn't have to be real, but I'm sure plenty of you have interesting stories to share with everything that's been going on. Any practice is good practice. Leave it in the comments below or probably better, shoot me an email so I can edit and leave comments. As much as I hate Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare said it best, parting is such sweet sorrow. To all of my ex-students, my friends here in Raleigh, thank you for many sweet memories. It has been an honor and a pleasure working with you. You inspire me every day. And for those of you watching that I haven't met yet, I can't wait. I hope these videos help whatever stage you are at in your English journey. Remember, I am still just a phone call or an email away. The email address is apexlanguagesnc at gmail.com. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me with whatever you need help with. Thank you as always for watching. Keep watching at apexlanguages.com. Until we meet again, have the happiest, healthiest, safest rest of your summer.